Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Spacey Matchers to search for specific morphological features. As you may remember from previous videos, Spacey stores the results of morphological analysis under the attribute morph of a token object and in some cases these morphological analyses can be very rich and in some other cases they can consist of one or two attributes only. In all cases the attributes are represented using string objects where the different morphological features are separated by a vertical bar. The actual features then are defined using the equal sign. So let's create a new Spacey Matcher object for matching morphological features. And as usual, we provide the vocabulary of the language model to the matcher object when we create the matcher. So let's define a pattern rule for two tokens. For the first token, we want to match fine-grained part of speech tags that have the value NNP, which stands for proper noun. And we also add the operator plus so that these proper nouns can occur more than one time if necessary. This allows us then to catch, for example, combinations of first and last names. For the second token, we want to match coarse part of speech tags that have the value verb and which also have all of the following morphological features. So their number has to be singular, they have to be in the third person, they have to be of the present tense, and they have to have a finite form. So we're being very strict here and we provide this sequence of morphological features using the same pattern that Spacey uses for the morphological analysis. As usual, both of these patterns are defined using Python dictionaries, which we then add into a Python list to be added to the morph matcher. To add the pattern to the matcher, we use the add method and provide the name of the pattern as a string object, followed by the list to the argument patterns, which is wrapped into square brackets because the input has to be a list of lists, as explained in the previous video. And then we also provide the argument greedy with the value longest. This causes the matcher to look for matches in a greedy way. So it looks for the longest matching sequence before returning any result. And this is especially important if you use operators such as um, plus, which then allow a token to be matched one or more times. So what we're going to do now is we add the pattern to the matcher and then match the doc object that we've already stored under the variable doc and then loop over the results. And as you can see, we only get a few matches because the criteria that we defined were quite strict. So the next question is how to loosen the criteria to match just some of the morphological features. To define a more flexible pattern, we still have to use the morph key for the dictionary, but instead of defining a string object with some morphological features, we provide a dictionary with the key is underscore superset. So let's unpack this a bit. So how does the is superset pattern work? So we can think of the morphological features um, associated with a given token as a set. So for example, in the previous case, the set could consist of the following four items. So number, person, tense, and verb form. And each of these, of course, have their specific values. If we would have another set with just one item, such as tense equals press, so for the present tense, then we could describe the relationship between these two sets by stating that the first set, which contains four items, is a superset of the second set, which has only one item. So this is how the is superset keyword works. So Spacey retrieves the morphological features for a given token 
and then examines whether these features are a superset of the features defined in the search pattern in the matcher object. So just to recap, you need to provide a dictionary under the key morph when defining a pattern for a token, which then consists of a dictionary with the key is underscore superset, whose value is a list of string objects and each string object needs to match a morphological feature as defined in the universal dependencies formalism. So in this case, we're simply going to match verbs um, in a past tense. So we provide a list with a single item that is the string object tense equals past. Then we add the pattern to the matcher under the name past underscore tense. And then we apply the matcher to the doc object under the variable doc. And finally, we store the results under the variable morph underscore results. So if we loop over the results and print out the name of the pattern, then the matching sequence and the morphological information for the final token in the sequence, that is the verb, then we see that all of the verbs have the morphological attribute tense equals past. So in this video, you learn to match morphological features using spacey matchers and how to match the patterns strictly and more flexibly. And if you have any questions about defining morphological patterns, then feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.